Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Cliff. And in this video, we'll be looking at creating our own programs and procedures. So far, we've seen how to compile programs and have those programs you know, as a list of instructions that perform things in sequence. Uh, and we've been able to call other procedures to perform tasks like some drawing things as well as printing things out to the terminal. Yeah, I've been, I've been getting a hold of this calling procedures uh, situation. I like it, it's useful, but um, I'm, I think it'd be really good if I could create my own procedures. You know, that way I could create a little bit more meaning in my own code, I could reuse sections of my own code, you know, all, all of these kinds of things. Yeah, well definitely, that's what this video is about. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> awesome. we can, yeah, uh, we can create our own procedures and, and that can help you sort of encapsulate all of the actions needed to perform different tasks in your program. And those procedures will be, be able to be reused. You don't have to code them multiple times. Get it right once and just call it anytime you want to. Okay. So here I've got this, uh, this Wii program that I've been making. I was, I was tasked with making a Morse code program. Well, it's, Tell me what it's saying. It's, it's, meant to say, it's meant to say YOLO. Okay. You can't see that? Can you? <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's, that's really one of the problems. And like I made tons of mistakes when I was doing it anyway and I was having to refer back to like the, the Morse code alphabet. And I think there might be a better way to do this. Yeah, so well, one thing we could do here is, is break this up into procedures. And so we can have sort of the instructions in a, a main procedure to start with. Uh, but I mean, it's affected. What we've got is pretty much the same. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now, well, what are the main sort of tasks inside your... Uh, Morse calling program. What are the what are the most basic ones? Maybe we'll start okay. there. We can then work up to, to more complex procedures. Okay. Well, looking at the the smallest sort of package of information in there would probably be the the short signal the, and long signal and the breaks. Yeah. Okay. So what we could do is create procedures to represent the actions that need to be performed when those tasks or when you want those tasks performed. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So yep. I mean, in this case. There is only one instruction in each of those. Uh, but uh, the good thing is later on, if we want to change how that works, yeah. you know, we only got to change it in this one place and everywhere else would then have that, that, one, that change reflected. Okay, yeah, and, I, and I can see that the, um, the main procedure is a little bit easy to read now. But well, we've got the idea now that it's making long and short signals and delays between characters. Yeah. It, it, it looks a bit more meaningful, but I'd I still have we st we've still just substituted each of those characters with my own procedure, so we haven't really changed much of the program. Could I like make a procedure to make each letter? Yeah, so that's definitely what I think we would do next. So what we could do next, instead of just having the long and short signals being called in main, what we could do is create our own uh, procedures to signal each of the different characters. Oh, so you can have your procedures calling other procedures. Yes, yeah, so... Oh, sweet. Inception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so now we can see that it's printing. You've got the, a procedure for each of those, each of the different uh, letters. Yeah. And the great thing is you only need, say, like the signal O once. And once you've got it right, it's three long signals. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So You I've can then saved, call it multiple times. I've saved like three lines of code already. Yeah. Sweet. And it's much easier to read now in main. You can actually, like, ignoring the signal section, you can see, you know, Y O L O. So that's, yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, and the great thing now, as I said before, we could actually change the whole way that this works. So at the moment, this is printing out to the terminal. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you'd only have to make a very minor change to have this work with a, uh, like, actual audio. So we could. Uh, change the way the short and long signal work so that they play sound effects uh, using the Swin game and, library that we've provided. And so, so j just by replacing those those right commands, yeah. those right procedures with the play sound effect, that that will affect all of the like the signal Y and the signal O as well. That's correct because each of those is actually calling those long and short signal procedures. I think that would like that's going to save me so much time in development later. Yeah. Well, the good thing would be if you. I mean, if you had a bigger program, if you made a mistake in one of your procedures, when you fix yeah. it in that one spot, it fixes it everywhere that called that, that one procedure. So you don't have to sort of, if you've duplicated the code all over the place. Yeah, so you can uh, just fix you it, don't have it to once find and it, it, and it everywhere. fixes it all, yeah. yeah. 
All right, Cliff, do you want to show us how this one works? Yeah, sure thing, Andrew. Um, so the program begins, and we start off in the main procedure. And the first thing that it does is it calls the procedure that I made called signal Y. So it heads up here, and um, then that the first thing that it does is calls the long signal procedure. Okay, so yep. we're jumping around a bit here, but uh, yep. I hope you can bear with me. So we head up here, and the procedure begins, and it plays the sound effect da. After that, the procedure ends, and it returns to the procedure that called it. Uh, and so the signal Y procedure remembers which instruction it's up to, so it now runs... Short signal. Yeah. Yeah, so once again, it short signal is called. And so it so goes on top of the stack. That's right, yeah, yeah, so... As you can see over here, yep, you've got the, the signal Y, and then it's, it's, calling, it's, it, it's yeah. calling a short signal. So it begins, plays the sound effect dit. Yep. It ends, and once again returns back to signal Y. Yeah. So now you said that it, it keeps track of which line it's in in signal Y as well. Yeah, the stack's, that's right, yeah. The stack's managing all that. I don't that's it. That's that. all in the stack, yes. Oh. The, the compiler's remembering all oh. of these things for Brilliant. us. Brilliant. Love it. All right, so... Uh, Next thing I think, oh man, I wish I could remember as good as the stack could. I think we're up so, to long signal. Yeah, yeah, long signal, yep. Yep. So we head back up to long signal. Same situation again. It's called, it begins, plays the sound effect da. Yep. Ends, returns back to signal Y. Signal Y. Long signal again. Yep. Man, I think I, we get the idea. I'm now. so glad yeah. that this is automated. Like if I had. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it is pretty cool. You just say do this and it does it for you. Yeah, and so now when signal Y ends... Yep, it's going to return to the uh, procedure that called it. Which was... Main. That's right. Yep, so we're back to main. Um, and we're going to call the character delay, so that's just a, a space so we can separate so it goes each up, of the yep, letters. The, plays the character delay yep. procedure. And so this is the same, but now you know it's, it's just calling fewer, fewer of our own procedures. Yep. It still calls delay, which is a procedure, and it probably calls other procedures that we don't know about. Cool. Cool. And so the process does it just continues, doesn't it? Yep. For for a signal O, and it calls through all of the different, or in this case, the three long signal procedures. Yep. Character delay, and then signal L. Character delay, signal O. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. And then when we've got nothing left on the stack, what must that mean? Well, uh, I, I guess because procedure main has ended, it will go to the end of the program yeah and that's it so that's how the program knows when it's over oh cool yeah all right so here is another example so in our uh, YOLO program we could put all of the the actual signals themselves yeah. YOLO phrase yeah. into its own procedure which prints out each of those characters so if you wanted to say YOLO ten times you don't you just need write, ten lines yeah that's right At, well and all of the accompanying procedures yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, here's, here's one that I've got here that's taken a uh, simple house drawing program yep. and, I, and I've split up all of the sections of the house because calling the, the swing uh, game procedures did look a little bit confusing in main. I've just separated Which those. Which just makes into, it much clearer, doesn't it? You, if you look in main, we can see that you're drawing, a, you're drawing some sky, you're drawing a hill, you're drawing a house. Yeah, and, and it means that if I wanted to change the, the colour of the sky, I know exactly where to go. Yeah, which, yeah. Uh, you don't have to work out which one of the different, you know, yeah, fill rectangles. Was it the rectangle? Was yeah. it the queer screen? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, that's it for procedures at the moment. We will come back and look at a lot of these things in more detail later to make things even easier. Okay. Because uh, cool. that's always the idea. I mean, we're trying to make, you know, do more with less. That's a good programming principle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we will come back and look at all of these and different things we can do with them. Well, but that's what, the basics what, of procedures. What should I check out next? That's a very good question, Cliff. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> next, watch the variables video. Uh, otherwise, if you haven't already checked them out, have a look at our uh, compiling videos. And we have a bunch of setup and install videos as well as a, a sort of an overall welcome to the series. Yeah. All right, I hope you've enjoyed that and we look forward to seeing you again soon. See ya. This has been a Spindoin production. Thank you.